Miami's my home. My casa, you said casa. Right, no, it's Miami's my, yeah, Miami's my home. My casa, su casa. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Miami, Season 6, Episode 7. And this is called Dildos and Dildos. And um, before we go on to this episode, I do apologize ahead of time. My allergies or being a terror right now for whatever reason. So bear with me, but we're going to get through this thing. And um, Miami is still being that girl still that girl so without further ado let's get into the review this episode starts um with day one with them being in palm beach and i will apologize ahead of time if i accidentally say palm springs at any point in time we're talking about palm beach we're still in florida i Ironically, before I knew that this is where they were going, I was actually planning a trip for me to go to Palm Springs sometime soon. And so, yeah, I might interchange them by accident, but they're at Palm Beach. I just wanted to make that clear. Um, anyway, but they're basically eating breakfast together. Um, they want to try. Um, so Lisa's goal for this trip is she, without besides her, it being a business trip for her she also wants to try to bring the girls together and so she actually starts off with doing just that she has a game for them um playing scavenger hunt um well basically doing a scavenger hunt and um she um with polaroid camera so it was actually it looked pretty fun and she divided them by three teams so we have one team where it is um dr nicole marisol and alexia so the three cuban girls um well, then we have kiki lisa and larsa on another team and then we have gertie um adriana and julia on another team and <laughs> gertie at first i could tell she was like i am not filming this but okay let's give this a try and then in her not in gertie's confessional but lisa's confessional she states like she figured that this will bring them together because her kids like this type of activity and um sometimes the ladies act like they're five-year-olds which is totally rich that this statement is coming from lisa considering how she acts throughout this episode just saying anyway um lisa before well before not Lisa, but Dr. Nicole, before they actually start doing this game, she's a little worried about teaming up with Alexia and um, Marisol because I think it's really more or less because of her and Marisol have not really resolved any of the issues that they've had. Um, we've seen in the previous episodes that Alexia and Dr. Nicole have resolved a lot of what they had going on. So... She's a little bit of reservation, but they go, they, they, they do it. And this scene was such a fun scene. They actually look like they're genuinely having a good time. Um, they played a whole bunch of different activities. So first activity was to take a shot together, say to take a picture of them all taking a group shot together. Um, and then the next one was act like an animal. So someone had to act like an animal and someone took a picture of that. And then um, a tasteful nude photo and um gertie's team skipped it she's like i'm not feeling that we're not doing that um <laughs> and then the other and then this was probably the most comedic part of this whole entire scene was they either need to find a tampon um panties or underwear i, I just want to say panties because i think that's what it said on the that's what it said on the screen or um lip gloss and they had to do it through not their stuff. They had to go to someone else's stuff to do that. So anyone that was on the team, they couldn't dig through their stuff. They had to dig through someone else's stuff on the team. And <laughs> Dr. Nicole ended up accidentally grabbing someone's dildo. 
which is why the name of the episode is called, what is it called? <laughs> and she grabbed it by the, her bare hands, not knowing that's what she was grabbing. And it was hilarious. And uh, Dr. Nicole, her confessionals, she vents about it. She's like, who brings a dildo on a girl's trip when the girl's trip is literally only two days long? And right after that, immediately we found out who did this through their confessional. And Kiki, yeah, y'all probably already knew. Those who've been watching the show long enough, y'all knew it was Kiki. Y'all all knew it was Kiki's. And Kiki stays through her confessional. It has been longer than six hours it's coming with. I was like, what? what? <laughs> so they actually ended up taking a picture with her having the dildo in her hand along with the lip gloss. It was cute. It, it was funny. It was hilarious. This whole scene was like not short of comedic relief. So it was just a great way to get the episode started. And everyone was actually really, really together doing this because they apparently Mirasol is super comp competitive. Um, so the three of them were like, no, we're winning this. And um, Alexia keeps saying, Alexia, and the other thing that was funny about it is that Alexia keeps saying, did do, dildo. She keeps call, calling it a dildo instead of a dildo. And we were all, and in the confessional, even the producers called it out like you're calling it a did do. Um, so like, a did, like, D I L hyphen do. That's what she keeps calling it. And we're just very... <laughs> and she says, really? She normally really calls it like a vibrator. But she states like, maybe that's the 80s thing. <laughs> so she's like, I don't know. And she's saying in her like, like Cuban X is like, I don't know. Maybe it's an 80s thing. But I just normally just call it a vibrator. <laughs> it was just such lighthearted fun. And then the last activity was they had to do a lap dance and Marisol's one who gives Dr. Nicole a lap dance, which is quite comical because I already stated they're not really getting along for real or they have unresolved issues, but yet they seem like they were having the most fun and it was just hilarious. And so, but fast forward, the team that was featured the most, you probably, it was kind of like a non-spoiler alert. I kind of figured Dr. Nicole's team was the one who was winning because they were featured, they were showing them the most doing all this stuff and they were literally doing the most with every activity just being extra and it was quite comical. And so um, Dr. Nicole's team receives an Aroma 360 diffuser as a prize. Da da da, which is basically Lisa's gig and the reason why they're even there. And the house is paid for by this group. So it, it made sense. But so the ladies go to get ready for dinner. Because after, the, apparently, I'm not sure if this took like hours or a whole entire day. I was kind of confused by this. And, you know, the editing and all that can be confusing on these shows. But I'm just like, did this take the whole entire, like, did this take the whole entire day? Or did this take a couple hours? Because I'm like, y'all literally just ate. And y'all about to get ready to go to dinner. But maybe it's going to take them long, that long to get glammed up. I'm assuming that's what they mean. Like. There's going to be that in-between time where they're going to need the time to get glammed up. And so, anyway. While everyone's getting ready, Dr. Nicole and Marisol actually go to poolside to have drinks and celebrate their win. And Dr. Nicole is drinking from one of Marisol's, like, cups that she brings. And they state how much fun that they were having. And then Marisol literally states the elephant in the room. She's like, she apologizes for how she's been treating Dr. Nicole. Um, and she does give her reason why she did this. I'm still looking at her sideways for the why because it seems it seems very immature and seems really weird. But uh, Marisol states that um, she's super protective of her friends because, I mean, for those who are not aware... And you're new to this channel. This was a soft one. Well, this was actually the first Housewife show. First or second. Because technically the Real Housewives of New York 
had a soft reboot the first time around before they had this full on reboot that they have recently. Um, but this one is the one that had the soft reboot, but they're off for multiple seasons for multiple years before they had the soft reboot. It took them quite a few years to get this soft reboot going. So Dr. Nicole, Gertie, Kiki, they're all new to the show. And then everyone else is on the show or a legacy. They were on the show in the past. So the rest of the ladies outside of the three that I just, well, actually, I'm sorry. yeah, Julia, Gertie, Dr. Nicole. Yeah. Outside of those three, the rest of the ladies have known each other for a very long time, have been in each other's weddings and all that. So they have a real friendship. And I think that's another reason why I love this franchise, because that's what sets this franchise apart from pretty much the other girls, because it's clear that a lot of these women actually hang out with each other in real life and they have real relationships and real friendships. And it's not just for the show. Um, but anyway, and even with the newer girls, you could tell that Dr. Nicole and Gertie hang out and then even Kiki. So wait, four, sorry, four newbies. Um, and then Adriana and Julia have a real friendship. So there's, there's a connection. Everyone's connected to the group somehow. And so that's, why to me i enjoy watching this show the most because yeah there's drama but there's no actual clear division um there's no division of oldies versus newbies because a lot of the friends a lot of the people who, who are newer to the show are friends with the older people like it was integrated very well that's that's all i'll get at um so yeah there's that So besides saying that she was being super protective of her friend, she also said that she kind of was like, she didn't say the word, but she pretty much said she was hazing her, which that's why I was looking at uh, Marisol kind of sideways. Cause I'm just like, at your big age, you're hazing people to be part of your group. And uh, Dr. Nicole calls it out. It says, but why did the hazing last for two years though? Because it literally lasts for two seasons. But two seasons literally meant like two years. She did this for like two years. That That's a little excessive. And it's weird because she didn't do this to Gertie. She didn't do this to Kiki. And she didn't do this to Julia. Well, maybe with Julia. Because Jul no, Julia, mm, yeah, maybe with Julia. Because Julia already has... Okay, I guess Julia would not be as much of a thing because Julia already is close friends with Adriana and Marissa already doesn't like Adriana. So there is no reason to haze her, if you will, because they they don't they don't like each other. That's pretty clear. Um, but Gertie didn't get this energy and neither did Kiki. So. I don't know. I feel like the real reason is that they're intimidated by after Nicole's real money and wealth that she has. And she's younger and very successful. And not only is she successful in her own right, her fiance has the coins too. And I will explain why I feel this way later on, because it will come up. You know what I'm saying. You know I always get the breadcrumbs before I get to it even more on this. So anyway, but Dr. Nicole does accept her apology fairly quickly and much to um, Mirasol's surprise. And Dr. Nicole explains to her, like, look, I do not have time to hold on to grudges. I did that with my dad for years, and I lost a lot of my years with my dad because I held on. So I'm not going to do that with things like this. Like, I'm just not going to do that. And she also pretty much goes more into detail about what she just said further in her confessional, which is pretty much reiterating what was just said there. And she states to Marisol that, and, and I feel this way too. When Marisol, I hate that Marisol acts the way she acts at times because she's hilarious. She is, to me, I find her funny. And sometimes it gives try too hard, but this season especially, I found her comedic. Like I found her comedic timing great. Like essentially, she's a co one of the comedic reliefs of like the group, um, or, or of the show. And 
Dr. Cole said, there's been times I wanted to laugh because you're so funny, but like I couldn't because I'm beefing with you and I wasn't going to laugh at someone. <laughs> I wasn't going to laugh at someone who I'm beefing with. And um, so they have a good kiki out of that and they make a toast and they resolve the beef. So next there's a mini montage of them getting ready, all having their makeup and whatnot happening here. It's really cute. Um, and, um, in this we have age, sorry, we have Alexia and Marisol in their room trying to close the blinds so they can get ready all the way. And I was questioning what they're doing. I was so confused what they're doing because it was clearly like the blinds that like don't have a string or anything. They just have like the, you know, the treat, the window treatment just it's, it wasn't really blinds. Blinds was more of a window treatment where it's just like that single thing where it closes things off. And it, like Alexia is carrying Mirasol basically piggyback style and trying to grab the, the window treatment. And they're doing all this struggle and stuff only to give up and then find that the blind controller or you know, window treatment controller was literally on the side of the wall and they just had to press a button. And I was just confused by looking at this because I'm just like, for how expensive this place looks, you you would think... <laughs> I mean, I would think that would be the obvious thing to look for. It's not going to be like, you know, basic like that where you just pull it. But anyway, it was quite comical. I feel like maybe that happened for more comedic purposes. I'm not even sure. But anyway... So, um, the ladies go into the sprinter. They're all looking good, by the way. And, um, this was not a sprinter ride, a disaster sprinter ride. This actually was a nice one, but they were talking. The conversation was quite interesting. And maybe this is just a thing for all housewives. I think it is. I don't even think it's a housewife's thing. I think it's a girl's thing. When you talk about the sexuals of it all, it brings everybody together. <laughs> Because I saw this with Potomac and we're seeing this again in this episode. So Adriana asked the ladies if they ever been um, involved with someone who's into feet. And Alexi in her confessional, she just states her disgust. Because she's like, I hate feet. This is gross, 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 gross. Not saying that Adriana's gross for saying it, but she's like, feet is just disgusting. And then Dr. Nicole states in her confessional... <laughs> That she actually went on a date with the guy right after her first, after the, her divorce of her, after her first divorce. Um, well, I guess her only divorce. Um, and the guy grabbed her leg, took her shoe out of, off her foot, poured champagne in the shoe and started drinking from the shoe, the champagne. And Dr. Nicole was not really disgusted by the fact that that was a thing, but she was like, you ruined my shoes. <laughs> and I was thinking that too. I was like, how would your shoes hold up after that? And I know, you know, Dr. Nicole has a coins, but it's still just like, I don't think, um, you know, Versace shoes or any of the expensive shoes are meant for that either. Just saying. I mean, maybe they do have fetish shoes where you can do that with. I don't know. I think I, I'm not fetish shaming over here, but this is just one of those fetishes that's not for me. So anyway, and then somehow they go from talking about that to talking about um, the um, backs of it all, the back ends of it all, and eating the back end of it all, and um, the, eating the groceries. There we go. Eating groceries. Talk about eating groceries. And they go from talking about eating groceries to threesomes, because according... Kiki thinks a threesome with toys is a threesome. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's still just you. It's, she's like, oh, it's not? <laughs> Kiki cracks me up. I love her on this show. I would love her to be full time one day because she is just, she gives so much. It, it's, it's great. But anyway, so. They arrive at the um, restaurant. It appears to be like kind of like a wood fire style restaurant pizza place. 
um, which is my favorite. If I do get pizza, that's the kind I like, that wood fire style pizza with the calamari and all that. But they, they pretty much order a spread for everyone to share. And the late and Lisa leads the ladies to a toast about everyone having fun and being together and, you know, hopefully resolving issues. Everyone's kind of somewhat looking at each other sideways because everyone knows that their issues aren't really being resolved. They just are tabling it because they want to enjoy the vacation. And they're there for Lisa. So they're kind of looking at Lisa a little weird about the toast. They're just like, things aren't really resolved, but okay. <laughs> so after, shortly after the toast, Mirasol decides she's going to stay at the elf in the room. And she addresses Adriana and says, hey, let's, let's handle this. Um, I question the motives of this. So we knew, and it came to, so you knew it came to commercial breaks. You knew when this was happening, you're like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is either going to pop off or something's going to resolve, but you knew which one. Guess which one that happened here. So Marisol states, um, it's not what you think right away. More will be revealed shortly. This scene, okay, before I go into it, the way this scene it didn't transpired, it was not on my bingo card. I was shocked. I thought they were just going to go to their typical get an argument thing. And where they ended up at, I did not expect it. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but let's get into it, though. So uh, Marisol states that she doesn't like how she was acting towards um, Adriana during the last Sprinter, van, Sprinter ride. Um, and they basically both state that they have a lot of history together. And, um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth and like, you know, one up in each other. And that's when Adriana chimes in. like, yeah, there's a lot of tit for tat that we got going on here. And somewhere it was weird, but, and maybe they cut the scene. I'm not sure, but. Julia states in her confessional that Mirasol apologized, but she doesn't know if she believes it. And in my and I'm thinking to myself, I don't think she ever apologized though. Unless they edited it weird, she never said I'm sorry. She never really did apologize at this point. So I was a little confused where she saw that there was an apology. Like she all she did was acknowledge the issue. And state that she didn't like her behavior. That's not really an apology though. You still have to say I'm sorry. Or I apologize. I don't know to me other than that. That's not really an apology yet. yet. It seems like you're saying the words is leading to an apology. But it's still not the apology. So I was questioning that. But then right after that it didn't even matter. Because Julia chimes in and makes the block even hotter. And states that she feels like the reason for the issues that the all, that the whole entire group has is actually because of Mirasol. And this is why the group can't move forward. And I was like, where is this coming from? <laughs> Julia, you're coming in hot. And I've said this more than once, but Julia does not really have a storyline. Let's be clear. She already kind of resolved her mini story that she had. And it wasn't it in the last episode with, you know, the F cancer event. And it's kind of like she even created a storyline for that. I, and even though the event and all that was beautiful and the attentions were amazing. It's like outside of this, what's your story on this show? Other than the fact that you're married to Martina. So it just seems like she's leaning really heavy on, okay, well, I'm just going to be the one who brings things up. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But anyway, so after she says this, then a turn of event happens that Alexia basically turns a mirror song. <laughs> 
and takes Julia's side on what she says. Because what Julia mentioned was that um, when Adriana was accused of dating a married man by Alexia, the information was brought to Alexia by Marisol. And she states that Marisol never did like she did that and just let let basically Alexia take all the heat and didn't try to like chime in to help out with that which is not actually completely true at all and even they beamed the footage a show wasn't completely true at all it's just when Alexia is activated or in bro mode I think that's what they call her they call her that she starts going to bro like she starts saying bro and then like she literally starts acting like a bro um there's no reasoning with her nothing you can't tell her nothing she's one of those people but anyway so while she was literally in that mode and arguing with adriana and adriana's trying to tell her well adriana's date is actually the one who's trying to say like look i'm not married like that marriage was finalized and Alexi and, and um, Marisol's even state, like states kind of like, Hey, maybe we didn't scroll down all the way. Like she said that, but she did say it quietly. So maybe that's why a, um, Alexia is kind of like taking up and like kind of saying, yeah, no, you just kind of let me hang to dry. But she did say it loud enough where, um, uh, Alexia could have heard her and course corrected. Like there was a mic. I'm confused. So I'm not sure where the disconnect is, but everyone is completely shocked because this is a rarity. We don't see this often. I think the last time we saw this was on Ultimate Girls Trip, uh, the Thailand edition, where uh, Alexia turned on uh, Marisol. And that's the thing about it. It's always that order. Now, it's not right. It's not right. But anyway, so basically, Alexia agrees with what Julia said and contradicts Marisol. And then Larsa chimes in and states that she had a similar issue with Dr. Nicole because of Marisol. So the rumors of what was going on with Dr. Nicole, those DMs and all that that she found, that was not, that was not um, Larsa finding them. That was Marisol finding them and sending them to her. I was like, oh, how about that? So, and then Marisol owns it, which is huge. She's like, yeah, I did that and it wasn't right. I shouldn't have done all that. I was doing too much. She basically states she was doing too much. So it's quite wild that she's getting exposed the way she's getting exposed in the scene. And then out of nowhere, you get another haymaker from um, Julia, like saying, is it true that you hired a private detective to spy on certain people and she's asking Marisol this and everyone's just like oh, what say what now and I was like when did the Real Housewives of Miami become the become mafia wives I'm so confused so the reaction I'm giving is literally the same reaction that the rest of the ladies are giving and it literally it's a case of like record scratch <laughs> say what now and um lisa actually clarifies and states like yeah um we heard about this going on in new york um there's a lot of talk about this in new york and side note i really wish maybe this is a bravo rule i wish it would just say reunion versus new york because sometimes and also too because i say bravo con why can't they just say reunion? But neither here nor there. Because I feel like for people who are new to the show, it might be confusing and you might think that they went on a trip to New York like it's like a trip, like a cast trip. 
So I just really wish I would just say reunion, but I guess that's a little too much of breaking the fourth wall. I don't know. But, um, so Dr. Nicole chimes in even further. She's like, yeah, that really was what was happening. She, she basically confirmed it and state that Anthony, who was the one who was actually being followed, um, by this detective, um, her, her ex fiance well, not her ex-fiance, her fiance, because it is her fiance, they were at a work event, um, kind of like a, a team building event. Um, so her, so his firm was at a team building event and Anthony saw that this guy just kept taking all these pictures of them. And for those who don't know, Anthony is an attorney. So he is probably seeing private detectives in this kind of activity with his line of work. Cause I'm not sure what type of attorney he is, but depending on the type of attorney he is, he might be aware of what's happening here, or he might just know the people to find out what's going on. But either way, Dr. Nicole basically confirms that someone was taking pictures of him after like an office dinner outing. And Marisol states that she had nothing to do with it. Like she's reiterating that she had nothing to do with it. And, and then like Julia states that one of her friends stated that she was doing the same thing to Adriana and like, and wanted to end her and end her Yana. Why I mean by that. And the rest of the ladies, especially Gertie, they're all just have this look of disbelief. Like what is happening? Because literally just went, it went from like, Cheers to us coexisting to this. <laughs> and they're all just going after Mira Saw. And for those who watch the show for two seasons, I'm sorry. As much as I have been enjoying Mira Saw this season, she had this coming because it's been, she's been kind of not nice the past two seasons. So it was, it was going to happen. It was her turn. And I think Marisol's very aware that was her turn. So she's like, okay, guys, just bring it. Let's, let's get this over with. Let's, <laughs> I know I was, I was wrong because I think similar to, um, Alexia, Marisol's trying to have kind of more of a redemption season herself. And also too, I'm not sure if Marisol wants to be full-time or not, but if she's trying to be a full-time housewife, she's going to have to clean some of like her wrongs up. So this will be the way to do it, you know, so. But by the way, so the ladies are still super shocked by the news and what's going on, all this tea being spilled. And Marisol immediately asked, like, are you talking to my ex-boyfriend? Is this like who you're talking to, Julia? And Julia doesn't say who she got the information from, but she kind of, her actions state, yes, that's who it is. And Marisol's like, I wouldn't trust something that's com coming from my ex-boyfriend. Like that was a really toxic relationship that ended horribly. And I think this might be the same ex-boyfriend that asked um, Adriana on a date on, which basically caused their whole entire rift to occur. That caused the whole entire issue with Marisol and Adriana last season was an ex. This, um, it was, um, So yeah, Marisol's like, look, this was a super toxic relationship that I had with this ex and I really wish you guys would stop bringing him up. And then she just starts breaking down. And Julia keeps saying, well, you're the one who brought him up. You're the one who brought him up. And it's just like, no. <laughs> oh. uh, Julia will be someone who's be super frustrating to like argue with because Julia is literally the one who brought him up. You're, she's the one who mentioned the friend. But I think Julie is saying this in a way of denying that we're talking about the ex, but that's who they're talking about. Because we find out later on, they literally are talking about the ex again. And it's just kind of like, does this guy want to be on the show? Like, what's happening? Why are they talking about someone? I don't know. I'm just never a fan of talking about someone who's never going to be on the show over and over again. Because this was kind of part of a plot last, last um, season. And I don't know. I'm, I will explain later because it comes up again. 
why I'm kind of not really okay with how this is going. Even though, yeah, Marisol deserves her comeuppance because she really was stirring the pot. <laughs> like, they're not wrong. She really was stirring the pot. But the thing is, she owned the things that she was stirring the pot for, for the most part. Um, actually, really, she did. The only thing she didn't own was like the private detective thing. And then the other thing she didn't own was what the, everything that the ex was saying. Um, because the ex is the one who mentioned that she was the one who was probably doing the private detective thing. But I think they keep forgetting that like... I think Mirasol is in PR. Like she worked for like a marketing agency in Miami for a very, very long time. And she's been kind of like an industry girl. Not really like in a sleazy way, but like she's been in the scene, the Miami scene for such a long time. She just knows people. So I don't know if maybe this ex, depending on who it is, has been dead about who she knows and all that. But I don't know. If they're going to go more into it, I would be interested but I just don't like, and I'll, I'll explain later, there's going to be more that goes to it that I don't like the direction of where it's going. But anyway, so, um, throughout all this happening, by the way, you know who's on mute challenge? Alexia. She did not, not once have, um, you know, Mirasol's back. And if it was in reverse, we know that's never how that goes. And I and I'm sure if you watch any of the other seasons, and even when you watch Off, Ultimate Girls Trip, that is a very common thing where and even actually the first episode of this show, it is literally a case where uh, Alexia never has Marisol's back like ever. She just lets her hang to dry by herself. She's always on her own. It's wild. But it's never the other way around. And I think, I think, um, Alex, no. And I'm pretty sure Marisol actually did call this out during the Ultimate Girls Trip. For those who haven't seen that, go back and watch that because, um, you definitely get to see more of Adriana and Marisol's dynamic and see the holes in their friendship and how sometimes their friendship seems kind of one-sided. But anyway. So, out of nowhere, Lisa brings up she would feel a way if the group were to hang out with Lenny. And she literally uses this as an excuse to bring up Lenny and then she just keeps talking about Lenny. And one thing had nothing to do with the other. <laughs> I was like, how did you find a way to do this? And this is after they literally have promised. A lot of the people, ladies in this group was like, please, if we're going on this trip, prompts don't bring them up. First opportunity she got, she did. She brought that man up. And Kiki and I are each other. Kiki's in the confessional. She's just like, Oh my gosh. Why did you have to somehow find a way to make this about you and Lenny? She literally says this in the confessional. I was like, you and me, you are me and I am you. When Kiki writes, she be right. And yeah, I'm going to know Salisa, she got Kiki activated. Because, and then Marisol... Even Marisol and like Julia are like, it, it's just weird because Marisol and Julia are just like, I'm pretty sure everyone's just like, how did this have to do with this? Like, they're not even related. The conversation of Marisol talking about how she doesn't want her ex brought up again has nothing to do with, remotely to do with how Lisa brought up Lenny. But... And then Gertie re reacts as well. And Gertie's just stating pretty much a similar false as Kiki. She's like, oh my gosh. She basically states like, 
I just want to start plucking every single individual eyelash out of my eye because it is just painful that she just keeps bringing this man up. And because it's exhausting how much she brings him up, it's, it's so bad. And y'all know that. Um, for those who have been coming to the watch the review, y'all know she just keeps doing this. But anyway, the ladies had enough about her talking to Lynn, uh, talk about Lenny. Larsa states to her, you're with a good man now, move on. She just says it so quickly, but under her breath type of thing. And then Kiki pretty much states what she said, her confessional, but like out loud. And Lisa gets defensive, like so defensive. And Larsa states in her confessional her annoyance about this as well. She's like, Lisa really does need to move on from this. Like, this is just ridiculous that you keep finding a way to bring this man up. Which is true. And the way Lisa's being defensive about the whole entire thing and how everyone's just kind of annoyed with her bringing up Lenny, she literally, and it's like she doesn't understand that this is how it comes across on TV. And I'm going to state it yet again. It comes off like she is the first person to ever go through a rough divor divorce in life. Like she, she started this. Like it, it's, it's giving, um, Ray J saying, I hit it first. If y'all know where that's from. <laughs> yeah. It's giving that though. It's so, it's just so like, it's giving Soldier Boy, I did it first. Like, it's giving, I just don't understand. Like, and she literally sounds ridiculously entitled. That's exactly how she sounds. And we know that Lenny's Basula. We know that. He's Basula. Trash. Throw him in the trash. Basula. But like, what else is going on? Okay, like, <laughs> and so Lisa starts um, snapping at Kiki saying, who are you to tell me how to live my life? And I'm like, what world is she in where she thinks Kiki's saying that? And everyone's just like, what? And then Kiki, Lisa found out the hard way that she picked the wrong one. Because <laughs> Kiki... Even though she's funny, she can hilariously get you together. She literally did just that. She was like, I'm trying to help you out. But like, you just keep talking about this man over and over again. It's like the song that never ends. It's like, you can literally make a song about Lenny for how much you talk about Lenny. And it's like, you need to figure out what's going on with you. It's like, you. it's like 90% Lenny, 10% Jody. Where do you fit in in this? I want to get to know you. What is going on with you and you, you only? And then she's like, well, maybe it's not that percentage. Maybe it is 90% Lenny, 9% Jody, and 1% you. That's not much of you. Like, we just need to know more about you. And she just kind of was just like, quickly just getting her together. And so Kiki was pretty much eating her up. And as she's saying all this, Marisol <laughs> and Alexia are in the back, like in the side, just kind of laughing a little bit because of the song comment. And then Marisol and Rebecca's like, let's see, let's see if we can make a song about Lenny real quick. <laughs> because you had to make it light because the way she just will not stop talking about this man, like this man doesn't live in your head rent free. This man has the whole island that is your brain. He owns it, clearly, because you just won't stop talking about this man. It's ridiculous. And so basically, <sighs> it gets activated, and then Lisa, after. It's so bad that actually <laughs> Marisol had to like rescue Lisa and like weigh the white flag, which is basically a napkin saying, Hey, we got to cut it out because they just, they were, they were not like 
Kiki was about to probably make her cry, run away and cry. <laughs> like, because Kiki was not letting off on the gas because she was just like the audacity that this woman asked me, like, who am I? Like, trying to attack me over basically trying to help her out. She's like, where did they do that? At? Which I, I agree. And so Kiki ends up going to the restroom to cool off. Dr. Nicole follows her. Um, but before that happens, Lisa asks to switch seats with um, Larsa because Lisa was sitting next to Kiki. And I'm just like, and you had the audacity earlier on this episode to call these women like children. What in the, what in the preschool duck, 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 duck goose is this? We're switching assigned seats now. Are you five? I'm sorry, but that argument wasn't even a real argument. She didn't cuss you out. She didn't go outside your name. She was just checking you and trying to like give you sound advice, but you don't want to hear it. So you feel like you're being attacked, even though all she's doing is giving you sound advice. So anyway, so then after, so after she switched seats and everyone else, like, so, you know, Kiki and Dr. Nicole went to the restroom. Lisa's literally sitting there pouting. She is pouting like a child. I'm like, wow. And see, I wanted to not say this in the previous episodes, but she kind of left me no room but to say it. And I think I wanted to say I. I was trying to not. I think a lot of the things that Lenny is saying in those headlines about how she behaves. This episode did not help you with that. This season is not really helping you with these headlines. There is giving that there's truth to what he's saying, even though that he, even though he's, he himself is Basula there still might be some truth in what he's saying. Like, it's giving a case of three sides to the story. That's not a good look. And I don't know, I'm a little worried for her when it comes to this divorce because this season, you know, just like you could have used last season to help you with the divorce, this season is probably not going to help you with that divorce because the way you're acting... The way you both are acting like straight up is childish. Y'all act, y'all acting like children. And I know, for, I, I don't know from experience, but I've heard divorces can get this ugly and get this childish, but like, it's still pretty sad considering that you have young kids that can eventually grow up and see this. And neither of y'all are thinking about that. You two are, both of you are too self-absorbed to realize that what you guys are doing are just all, it's all, all around messed up and you guys just both want to win it's not about i don't think it's about really getting what's rightfully yours or anything like that it's 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 just uh, it's sad it's all it's all the way around sad but anyway so while the consoling is happening kiki's asking you know dr nicole like was i mean and dr nicole's like no but like Dr. Cole's like, Lisa's like a little bird. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, bird springs are not that big. So, I mean, I don't think Dr. Nicole was saying it that way, but I took it that way. And also taking it that like, yeah. Yeah, but anyway. And so while this, pout, while Lisa's pouting, she finally goes from piloting to start talking about Lenny again. Yeah, she goes back to talking about Lenny again. And while this is happening, Larsa is trying to reach out to Gertie about, she's basically said like, hey, I had good intentions when I told the group about what was going on with you. I don't know if I believe that, but okay. Um, I think you have a storyline and you wanted to use this as your storyline. Okay. Um, and it was not about gossiping. Yes, it was. And sorry, I don't believe Larsa. Y'all know I don't believe Larsa. And, but yeah, she still doesn't apologize or acknowledge her feelings. 
And Gertie, I'm so glad she stuck with her guns because she said in the episode before, she's like, I, she literally said, only thing that I'm accepting from you is an apology. And if I'm not getting that, then there's really nothing else to talk about. She didn't really say it like that, but she was like, I just need an apology from you. And Lars is refusing to do it because she says, where are we in kindergarten? And I'm just like, and then Gertie actually gives an example of what someone is in kindergarten and apologies is not that. It's pathetic that Larsa thinks apologizing is juvenile. Well, really, it's the opposite. That's mature to own your stuff, Larsa. That's mature. Accountability is a mature act. It's not immature at all. Mind you, all this is like happening while Lisa is still talking about still talking about Lenny, and. Gertie basically kind of shuts it down calmly. She's like, hey, this, Lisa needs this right now. We don't really need to talk about this right now. And so they go back to, so Gertie um, actually goes to sit closer to where Lisa's at to console her and actually is able to calm her down and stop her from like kind of just losing it. She was losing it. She just kept talking about Lenny, but not in a way where it's like, um, it was more of a spirally kind of way, like like, and I I feel bad because I feel like I'm being very insensitive to Lisa, but it's just she's kind of annoying. I don't want to be insensitive, but she is also still kind of annoying. Two things can be true, and so um, Gertie's like, you just really want us to listen. I get what it was. You want us to listen. You wanted to vent. She's like, exactly. You wanted to feel heard. And because Larsa is kind of not, she don't be catching things. Gertie was saying that about herself too at the same time, but Larsa wasn't catching it because literally that was literally what Gertie has been trying to tell Larsa even before the cancer thing this whole entire time. She doesn't feel heard or acknowledged or any of that by Larsa. Hence why Gertie called her fake. Everyone else can see this is, it's, it's wild that they have different, completely different situations, but the results are very parallel with each other. So Marisol rallies the ladies up and says like, hey, let's wrap up the dinner and go home. And she's, <laughs> and in her confessional and kind of out loud, but mainly in the confessional, she states like, Lisa has a big day ahead of her. She needs to get plenty of rest. And this, you know, stress is not going to help her. But she's like, and she needs to make them coins. And I was like, that's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly why she's there. And so they end night one. So um, day two starts. The ladies wake up. Julia and Adriana go to poolside in their pajamas with coffee. And immediately, um, Julia asks Adriana, how did Marisol... Um, know that she was meeting with her ex. And they think that she has an informant, which she probably does, because again, she knows everyone in Miami. And I don't know why they don't know that, but okay. Um, I feel like it's been established in multiple seasons that that's a thing when it comes to her. Um, and also her mom was super famous. Like, anyway. So... Julia states that the ex claims to have a lot of trauma related to Marisol and that um, Marisol hacked his computers. And then after that, then like Adriana states that the ex mentioned that Marisol um, had a voodoo doll and practices Santeria. And I'm just like, no, you got, you guys better throw this plot in the trash. Y'all better not do this to this franchise too. Why do y'all like to play with the religions of it all? I don't like that. Like, I don't like where y'all, this is what I was talking about. I don't like where this is going. Y'all better dead this so quickly. 
like that it. But so after this was said, Julia did quickly switch subjects. I was like, I hope Julia has the wherewithal to let go of I hope I hope this the the religious practices don't get brought up on this franchise. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. Keep the religious talk with the real housewives of Salt Lake City, and that's it. Like because all the other franchises are using it in a disrespectful and kind of discriminatory way, it seems. I don't like it. Anyway, so Julia switches subjects quickly and states that she wants to address a question that she has with um, Alexia about the Todd thing. She kept mentioning that she needs to get Todd's permission on you know, them rooming together. And Julia, I need you to let this storyline go. I need you to let the storyline go. I need you to drop down to being a friend of. Like, maybe you and Adriana could switch. I think Adriana would be a great full-time and you can go back to being, and you could be a friend of. Um, because I'm sorry, without Martina, you don't really have much of a storyline. We're kind of more interested in Martina. And she's, she seems to be a super nice lady. I'm not trying to be offensive. I don't want people to lose their jobs or anything like that. But what does she bring to this show? And then even when she was like bringing up conflict and all that in the dinner, it still did come off out of place a lot of times. It, it comes off like I'm fighting for my job because I don't have anything else going on. That is literally how it comes off as and. For someone who's going to be a pot stirrer on a show, it can't come off that way. Like, love or hate Marisol, it never came off like she was fighting for her job. It came off as, I just kind of like stirring the pot. <laughs> like, anyway, so, like, yeah. <laughs> That's, I guess that's kind of like my thought with Julia as a whole. I want to like her, I, but she really has nothing going on. Oh, and side note. Arr, let's rewind back to that Sprinter van scene. What was Julia wearing? That's another thing, too. Her fashion's past two episodes. When it comes to this Palm Springs trip, I'm like, see, I knew I was going to say Palm Springs. Palm Beach trip. I knew I was going to eventually slip and say it. But anyway, what is she wearing? I don't know what she was wearing. Everyone else's outfits looked all right, like looked good and gave a need to be gave. But she just always looked, a lot of times when she dresses, she looks kind of matronly, which I get it if you, because you, a lot of the women have had children. But like the other outfit that she had when she showed up to go to Palm Springs, Palm Beach to go to Palm Beach. She was like literally looking like she was going to the Kentucky Derby while everyone else looked like they're going just to another place in Florida. It's just I'm so confused. Anyway, so they finished talking and they and then all the ladies gather for breakfast together. I do like that they're all gathering for breakfast together and they're not eating separately and stuff. It seems like they definitely have this girl's trip is given when he's behaved so far. I like it so far. Anyway, but um, Lisa is still mad Kiki. So she was being really weird about the high of it all. And I was just like, girl, you're immature. Oh, she's so mature. And um, Kiki states in her confessional that she doesn't understand why um, Lisa is acting this way. But she's washing her hands up. And she's like, whatever. Um and then Lisa states what's in store for the ladies for that day. She states that they will be playing croquet. And Lisa will be going to the lab with um, some of the ladies, but not all of them because, you know, can't have everyone go. And states, and, and so we find out later in a little bit who she chose to go with her. So, um, with... Lisa going to um, the lab. 
We find out that she's taking Dr. Nicole and Adriana. Um, she states in her confessional that Alexia is too opinionated she didn't want to bring her. And then Larsa, Lisa's best friend, mind you, didn't want to go. So she actually opted to go crochet, um, to play croquet with the rest of the ladies. Um, she stated that she's okay with this. Um, so she'll let it pass, but I feel like that was a breadcrumb. There was a breadcrumb there. But anyway, so the rest of the ladies are arriving in style, but not officially, by the way. Um, so they end up getting two cars of like the older looking cars, the kind of cars that they drive in like the older style cars that like are very common, like Cuba, um, Havana to be exact. And one of the cars breaks down <laughs> on the way to the event. And um, it was due to the heat and old cars. Older cars like that, they're like 1950 something cars. They're, they're no gas guzzlers. Like they're not. They're definitely more for style, not for practicality at all. For, for those who have never ridden in any of those cars are older because they're older convertible cars, classic uh, coupe looking cars. Um, I think they're both Chevy coupes and yeah. So the rest of the ladies, so the other, so they had three ladies in each car. So the other ladies actually had to go in the other car and pile in there on the way to the event. Um, because fortunately the other ladies were not too far away. Uh, First, the guy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. And then they're like, no, it sounds dead. So the guy kept trying to restart it. He could restart it. I was like, sir. <laughs> While the um, other ladies are having basically the um, malfunction of, <laughs> of a sort, um, Lisa arrives at the lab. And it's actually definitely, it's definitely way more relaxing. And we get to, but it is interesting. And we get to see her test the sense out. And then the fragrance, um, this fragrance, she needs it to work, um, both financially as well as her part of moving on. So she does share with the ladies what this means to her for her to move on. Because she wants, she really just wants to be happy and she hasn't been happy in a very long time. And we can tell that. Cameos, look who it is. Whisper in zero. <laughs> Anyway, moving on here. Um, so, but the doctor, and basically when she's saying this, I'm wondering, and this is why I've been wondering this whole entire time, how does Jody feel about this? I'm pretty sure when they rewatch this, I just, I'm curious how he really feels about it because I wouldn't feel okay when it comes to any of the things that Lisa was saying. I... I'm very confused how Jody feels about this. And confused slash curious because I don't know. None of this would sit well with me how um, Lisa's been acting. And then also, I really think, and I feel like this has been, been the most commonly said thing, she really should be single right now. She should not be in a relationship at all or at least just have like a little fun distraction, like a situation. I wouldn't even call it a situation. I would call it less than that. Just like someone that I wouldn't even say that. I would say just have a situation. Like I, would, I wouldn't even call it a situation because I don't even think she needs to be tied down like that. I think she really just needs to be single. I mean, that's really what I would say. I think she really just needs to be single and work on herself, which she's not doing at all. Um, and. She states that she feels like she's losing herself and she's questioning. And I don't even know how I feel about this statement because if you've been with a man for as long as she's been with this guy and he basically helped build you, like literally, because he's a, you know, one of the biggest plastic surgeons in like the country and well, definitely in Miami. Um, he basically built a life-size Barbie, which is you. And... At a very young age, he did all this with you and to you. And you guys have been together for as long as you've been together. How do you think you're losing yourself when I don't think you know who you even are to lose yourself 
Do you even know yourself to say you're losing yourself? I guess is my question. And this is more of like a, I, I, I guess I, because I can't relate. I cannot relate. I'm sorry. This is not relatable for me because I am a selfish person and I just would never get to this point. That's just me. That's just me. Um, but I have a lot of family members who do get to this point and have been dependent, but like, I'm the family member who's anti-dependent. I rather just be by myself than be dependent on anyone. So I kind of have the opposite problem that I I'm probably should work through and I kind of am working through here and there, but that's a little bit of tea on me. But anyway, so I did not find the seeing as annoying as annoying when it came to Lisa though. Because she really was speaking from the heart and it didn't come, it didn't come off as complaining. Because I think a lot of the issues with most ladies, including me, is it's, it's the complaining. It's not her speaking what she wants for herself and all that. Because, yeah, if you're mentioning Lindy, but you're speaking what you want for you, that's different than you complaining about this man. It's not the same. And I think Lisa doesn't know the difference. And I think that's part of the problem. Okay, so the other ladies arrive at Croquet. They're eating lunch at the club. And they notice their surroundings and everyone is older. All the men are older and it's only men there. And um, Marisol's the one who kind of makes that known. But um, Marisol also gets an alert on her phone. And it's more news about Lenny and Lisa again. And this time, Lenny is claiming that Lisa's trying to bleed him dry and buy and Purchasing Instacart for like 10k a month. She's spending 10k a month on Instacart, and the ladies are all shocked. But Larsa states in her confessional she believes it, and Larsa states like she might be buying some groceries from for Jody, which weird. Um, and then she also states that uh, Sephora is a part of Instacart, aka like makeup. So you're buying expensive makeup as part of your monthly grocery budget. Yeah. So Larsa does also state that Lisa doesn't know how to manage her money well. And um, she needs to learn how to do that. And we saw that in the last episode that that was part of the problem. But then they also show when she mentioned that a couple more scenes from two years ago. So even before the Lenny thing was even like a thing all the way where they're still married. Um, yeah. She does not know the value of a dollar for her like that. Which makes sense because again... She got with Lenny at a super young age. She did not develop those skills. She doesn't know any of that. Um, and then Marisol states that they, she also needs to learn to accept their feedback and stop getting upset when she gets what she doesn't like. And that is where the episode ends. And Miami's still that girl. I'm still eating up. And I mean... The, the way this ended literally kind of further validated why I said that Lisa, this season, this is not helping you. The show is not helping you. You really do come off like a spoiled entitled crap. And like, I know you spent the time being with your husband for so long, but the difference is, and you know, I guess you could do a comparison between Sutton and her ex-husband's situation, how she got all that money, versus Lenny and her husband. Lenny already had the money. You did not help him build that money. He already had it. He, you know, all practical purposes, you kind of ended up being like a sugar baby. You know, in a way. And sure, there's probably love and stuff there too. 
But like, when he's not an attractive dude, he's not attractive at all. Like he looks like he's busted blood. Like he looks the part. And with the opposite end of it where um, Sutton got that money, settlement money, she fought to get that. She deserved it because her and her husband built that business and empire together. She was a working mo woman who helped build that empire with her husband, ex-husband. So she really was truly entitled to that money because she helped build that empire and then also she helps take care of the children and whatnot. And from what I gather, I don't think Sutton had like a nanny or anything like that. Or if she did, she really didn't use it the way Lisa uses a nanny and stuff. Like, Lisa just really has a lot of growing up to do and she needs to do it fast for her kids. I mean, really for her kids, but also for herself. She'll thank herself later if she does that. And she just really needs to give up this whole idea of I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. Um, I think she finally does get out the house. I mean, I would think so, but it shouldn't have even gotten that far for her to have to get out the house. She should have probably just got out the house. And then that headline that concludes the episode that you're spending 10, 10K on Instacart. Larsa even states in her confessional, the most she spent on her kids, that's her and her kids was $500 like a week which is actually reasonable i don't know how she's only spending 500 dollars a week because well no that's that's actually truly reasonable because i spend yeah that's reasonable and i don't know how much she spent when she was still married and had the husband because, I mean, you know, she has a, she has um, Sky Pippa Jr. I don't know about her other kids, though. I just know she has Sky Pippa, Sky Pippa Jr. because he's in the NBA now. But um, anyway, but the point is, Larsa is speaking facts here. When Larsa's right, she's right. And one of the things she is right about is she does need to learn how to manage her money and be independent and kind of grow up. But the thing is, I don't know how Lisa's going to get there. She won't accept other people's advice when it's advice that she doesn't want to hear. But anyway, that does conclude this episode review for Real Housewives of Miami. And hopefully you appreciate some of the cameos you saw here. You see Zero. He's like, I got to make my presence known. I love this franchise. I know that's not what he said. But anyway, <laughs> I... You can tell I get tickled when my pets get in my reviews or videos in general. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I also do apologize again for the allergies. You already know what it is. And ironically, they're part of it. But I love them and I'll get allergy shots. Whatever. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye!